When I heard that launching Europa Clipper on a Falcon 9 had saved NASA over $2 billion, that got me thinking, just how much has SpaceX saved NASA and the US government since its first major government contract to HLS and beyond? SpaceX's first major government contract was for commercial cargo to the space station. This first program was called COTS, or Commercial Orbital Transportation Services. And this competition was actually inspired by a SpaceX legal challenge to a NASA award to Kistler Aerospace. They were awarded $227 million after they had already gone bankrupt, so SpaceX challenged this decision and COTS was born. The function of COTS was to provide development money for orbital launch platforms that could then send cargo to the International Space Station. The two winners of the competition were SpaceX and Orbital Sciences, a company which has since merged with Alliant Tech Systems to form Orbital ATK and was later absorbed by Northrop Grumman under Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems. But in the end, this meant that $396 million was going to SpaceX for the development of their Falcon 9 vehicle and the Dragon capsule, which was to send cargo to the International Space Station. And $288 million was awarded to Orbital Sciences to develop the Antares rocket and the Cygnus spacecraft. After their successful test flights in 2012 and 2013 respectively, a new competition was formed, Commercial Resupply Services. This in effect continued competition between SpaceX and Orbital Sciences, and importantly awarded money to them in compensation for their flights to the space station. SpaceX was awarded $1.9 billion for 12 flights, while Orbital Sciences was awarded $1.6 billion for 8 flights. This gets you a per-flight cost for SpaceX of around $158 million, while for Orbital it's $200 million per flight. When you add in the development costs under COTS, and account for the fact that those costs are going to be spread out over the lifetime of the vehicle during the contract, which for SpaceX means 29 flights, you get a cost figure of $191 million per flight when you include the development costs. For Orbital, you get, for the 19 total planned flights, a cost of $215 million. And you're going to realize a common theme with SpaceX bids during these competitions. The Dragon capsule isn't just used for cargo anymore, it's now used to send astronauts to the space station. And now you're going to see just how much that decision saved NASA when it came to the commercial crew program. The commercial crew program came down to a competition between Boeing's Starliner, Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser, and SpaceX's Dragon 2, with only Starliner and the Dragon 2 making it to the final round. For the sake of brevity, I won't include all the awards because there are like five rounds for commercial crew. But the award started in earnest with Commercial Crew Integrated Capability, or CCI CAP. This is the first round that NASA actually selected for complete end-to-end -end proposals of missions, and this awarded $460 million to Boeing for their CST-100 Starliner, and $440 million for SpaceX and their Dragon 2. The next big award came with the Commercial Crew Transportation Capability. This included the final development, testing, and verification for crew demonstration flights to the ISS. The contract awarded $2.6 billion to SpaceX and $4.2 billion to Boeing, with later $278 million in additional funding. This then translates into a total funding of $3.144 billion for SpaceX and $5.108 billion for Boeing. You do the math and NASA has saved $1.96 billion by using SpaceX for commercial crew. Not to mention the fact that Starliner is actually more expensive than the Soyuz. It's $90 million per seat while Soyuz was only charging $80 million. Well, I say only, SpaceX charges $55 million. Boeing does cope with this fact by saying they can fill the fifth seat with cargo, but I don't really buy it. They're still charging $90 million for each astronaut. And this is not to mention the fact that Starliner still hasn't even successfully docked with the International Space Station, and with errant Russian modules and RCS troubles forcing a rollback of the Atlas V launching it, I honestly don't even know if they'll be able to make this launch window to the ISS. So NASA, by saving $1.96 billion, has actually resulted in a more capable vehicle that has since made three crew flights to the ISS, while the reliable flight heritage capsule has just been a huge time sink and embarrassment, frankly, for NASA, 
that is still at least six months away from flying its own demonstration mission, a demonstration mission that SpaceX has flown at least two years ago. Next comes NSSL, or the National Security Space Launch Award. This is the main way that the Air Force contracts out its national security missions in huge five-year blocks. And the two winners for the National Security Space Launch Award for 2022 to 2027 were ULA's Vulcan and SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. The Phase 1 development contract awarded $967 million in development money to the Vulcan rocket. None was awarded to SpaceX because Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy are already flying. There was an award to SpaceX, though, for adding vertical integration, extended fairings, and pad upgrades for $180 million. Now, the Phase 2 award for the actual flights, SpaceX won 40% of the launches, while ULA won 60%, leading to a contract split between SpaceX and ULA of $2.5 billion for SpaceX and $3.5 billion for ULA. These are rough numbers, but if we imagine SpaceX won 60% of the contract, that would mean a $3.75 billion award, which is actually more expensive than ULA's bid. There are two reasons for this, I think. Either SpaceX has some fixed fee that wouldn't scale up if they won the 60% award, meaning that their award would be relatively cheaper than just multiplying their amount. But they could also just be factoring in the fact that they are now a heritage launch vehicle, and as such deserve extra money for their extra capability. Whatever the case may be, the Department of Defense still saved $537 million by flying SpaceX for the National Security Launch Award over just choosing ULA for 100% of it. And as Tori continues to ask where his engines are, it is extremely doubtful that Vulcan will fly in 2021, which means it'll miss its certification flights necessary for the National Security Launch Award. This means that the Atlas V is likely going to be pressed into service in order to launch the first few flights of the National Security Space Launch Award. This is not ideal because Congress has mandated the US government to stop using Russian engines as soon as possible. So with Vulcan being pushed back into at least 2022, SpaceX again is offering more capability, more reliability, at an even cheaper price. And wait until you hear about HLS and Europa Clipper, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. The Human Landing System contract allows NASA to contract out private companies to land the first astronauts on the moon. For my comparison, I'm just going to include Blue Origin's national team and SpaceX, because I'm sorry Dynetics, but your alpaca lander was just never going to win. The first phase of the awards was for development of initial concepts. SpaceX got $135 million, while Blue Origin got $579 million. And for phase 2, to provide a crew lander for the Artemis 3 missions, SpaceX was awarded $2.9 billion, while Blue Origin was awarded $5.99 billion. This is a huge increase in cost, on the order of roughly $3.53 billion more dollars for NASA. Just to put that number in perspective, that's more money than NASA has given to SpaceX for the development of the entire Crew Dragon program. And on top of that, when you look at the two proposals, it's just night and day. I mean, this has been hashed out a million times, but just look at the size of the two vehicles and try to figure out which one costs twice as much. It's completely absurd. And now when you look at Blue Origin's infographics trying to post this as a disadvantage with Blue Origin calling SpaceX's Starship HLS immensely complex and high risk, while their balsa wood models have absolutely no risk involved. And when you look at Starship, it's not just a moon lander. In fact, that's not even its main purpose. Its main purpose is to go to Mars. And if NASA is serious about a moon to Mars pathway, then Starship is the perfect vehicle to do it. Not to mention, there is literally a Starship at Boca Chica right now that's about to be fully stacked. The views have been surreal, by the way. It's just incredible the amount of access we have to the development of an orbital class rocket happening literally on our screens every single day. But again, SpaceX saved NASA $3.53 billion by proposing a more robust and more capable vehicle in almost every metric. And now for the contract award that just highlighted the absurdity of SpaceX's advantage over other launchers. Congress had originally mandated that the Europa Clipper science mission was to fly on SLS. This of course would have been absurdly expensive on the order of a couple billion dollars. 
since they would not only have had to order another SLS core which can run you about $741 million, but NASA would also have to pay for the increased production capability that would come with an extra launch of SLS during the peak of the Artemis missions around 2024 and 2025. This would then mean another million dollars spent upgrading the infrastructure. And if that wasn't enough, the solid rocket boosters cost so much vibrations that NASA would then have to address that issue for another billion dollars, because why not? Bringing the cost to two billion dollars and some change. And SpaceX offered to launch the mission for guess what? A hundred and seventy-eight million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is ridiculous. SpaceX saved NASA over $2 billion on a single launch thanks to developing the Falcon Heavy. If that isn't ridiculous, I don't know what is. The reason this couldn't have been launched on something like the Delta IV Heavy was because that would have necessitated a flyby of Venus, which would have required more heat shielding and a much longer mission. Falcon Heavy, on the other hand, using a Star 48 kickstage, can send Europe a clipper on a direct path towards Jupiter. And now you might think SpaceX is done saving the government money, but we haven't even looked at the lesser known vehicles that SpaceX has launched for the government that have also induced tons of savings. The launches of the Block 3 GPS constellation on reused boosters have saved the Department of Defense a further $129 million. This is in addition to the fact that they're likely getting some cost savings by launching these on a Falcon 9, versus a normal expendable launch vehicle like the Atlas V or Delta IV Heavy. Speaking of, to date there have been 23 launches by SpaceX of government payloads. All of these would have launched on something like an Atlas V if the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy weren't available. So, if you take the savings to be roughly $50 million per launch, which is the average cost difference between a Falcon 9 and the Atlas V, and multiply that by the 23 government missions, you get additional savings of around a billion dollars. This means in total, SpaceX has saved NASA and the US government over 10 billion dollars. When you look at how much money that is compared to NASA's budget of around 25 billion dollars a year, you start to realize why NASA has really put their trust into SpaceX these past couple of years. I feel like it's kind of common knowledge that SpaceX is now cheaper than any other launch provider, but still, it was pretty eye-opening for me to see that figure on paper and it shows just how different of a company SpaceX is. They're not looking to get money out of the government now. They're looking to foster a space economy and increase spending in space, so when Starship comes out and Mars colonization starts being less of a dream and more of a reality, there is a vibrant space economy that the US and its partners can capitalize on and really drive space towards a more sustainable endeavor, something which we frankly haven't seen with the likes of Space Shuttle and the SLS. With that, I want to thank you guys for a thousand subscribers. I mean, I've been having tons of fun making these videos, and I'm really glad you guys are liking them. Just really thank you guys for all the support. I'm Cosplus Content, signing off.